de conférence. Cette conférence a été co-organisée par la Côte d'Ivoire et le PNUD. Après avoir écouté la voix de la Côte d'Ivoire, quoi de plus normal que d'entendre le PNUD Je voudrais, mesdames et messieurs, vous prier de bien vouloir recevoir Madame Hélène Clark, administrateur du PNUD. Excellencies, President of Côte d'Ivoire and President of Senegal, Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire and Ministers and High Authorities of Côte d'Ivoire and from many countries, uh, President Thabo Mbeki, members of the Diplomatic Corps, all protocols observed. Can I begin by thanking most sincerely the President and the Government of Côte d'Ivoire for organizing this very important conference in which UNDP is very pleased to be a partner. We see it underlining Côte d'Ivoire's commitment to achieving what the African Union has titled the Africa Africans Want, an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa and managed by its own citizens. Can I also thank the African Development Bank and the World Bank for their support for the conference and all the countries represented for being here today. We come together across leaders, practitioners, experts and advocates from all corners of Africa, from the BRICS, from other rapidly emerging and developing countries from around the world. And there is so much to be shared among ourselves at this conference about emergence. We look to build from it and consolidate lasting partnerships, South-South cooperation. All present are partners in translating the long-term vision of emergence shared across Africa into the specific policies and initiatives which will make it happen. According to scenarios developed by the African Development Bank, an emergent Africa would catch up with the living standards and competitiveness of other regions. It would ensure that all Africans have the opportunities that they need to improve their lives. And it projects that by mid-century, an emergent Africa would have tripled Africa's share of global GDP, enabled 1.4 Africans to join the middle class, and reduce tenfold the number of people living in extreme poverty. These are very exciting prospects. African countries face both opportunities and constraints as they embark on translating the goals of remoteness into concrete. Their economic growth rates and youthful population are providing windows of opportunity which bring countries closer to emergence. We've seen over the past 15, 16 years or so, so many countries strengthen their social services and reduce extreme poverty. Many are rapidly reducing their under five mortality rates. Many more children are in school. There are lower rates of HIV prevalence. Steadily increasing revenues generated by economic growth have created so many more opportunities to transform economies and societies and set in motion the changes which will eradicate extreme poverty and clear the way for an emergent Africa. This is very much inclusions which UNDP's 2013 Human Development Report on Rise of the South came to. It noted that 14 of the 20 countries making the fastest rise in the world in the Human Development Index since 2000 are in Africa. And with average annual GDP of 8% or higher for the past three years, Cote d'Ivoire is a very good example of Africa's potential to climb the Human Development Index very fast. Congratulations. From the African Union, we see Agenda 2063, providing a pathway to emergence. Around 30 African countries have included their objective of reaching emerging or emerging country status in their national development strategies. 
Captive week before has only three months in history, setting out to just end the first of our latest by 2020. And the trust scene and other regions of the world suggest that Cote d'Ivoire's strategy is sound. Achieving emergence calls for leadership, calls for vision, good analysis, planning, and action. None of this is made any easier by the system which appears to be normal for our lives. See a rash of new conflicts around our world, adding to the old ones which never entirely went away. So, to consolidate emergence in this often unpredictable context, Countries can strengthen their resilience to shock through economic diversification, investment and in social protection, social cohesion, and participatory approaches to development and to government. Let me offer a few further thoughts on some key issues which must be tackled on the road to emergence. And I start with addressing inequalities as being very important. When we look at human development over the past 40 years, we see economic growth on its own is not enough. To reach emergence, specific actions are needed to curb high inequalities across income, health and education, and empower people with the skills and opportunities they need. Was large largely often persist between men and women. By reducing inequalities, African countries will lift human development comprehensively and high potential of women and men and all groups to contribute to development. On gender equality, quite a lot of effort has been expended on some of the issues are affecting agriculture. It's estimated, for example, that women farmers are some 30% less productive than male counterparts, and it's not because they work less hard. They work very hard but they don't have equal access to inputs of many kinds. If there were equal rights and access to resources for the women farmers, countries would increase their agricultural output, they would raise women's incomes and help uh, reduce food insecurity. And this is very Enthusiastic about the program that has been such a lot of the efforts in the past few years in Africa, <laughs> building and enabling economic empowerment to start tackling some voting our next efforts in the middle to ensure that economies become more inclusive and diverse and can add more value to commodities. Employment and output will need to be built up on a wider range of industries and services, and ever more will need to be invested in training infrastructure development and strengthening institutional capacities. We see the current rates of economic growth, the new discoveries of oil, gas and other mineral resources, and growing levels of private and public investment providing very significant opportunities for structural transformation. And at UNDP, we commit ourselves to supporting countries to build the capacities to realize that potential. My third point is around harnessing the potential of youth. As one of the major strengths of the continent is a youthful, innovative, and energetic population. How the trans emergence depends if countries invest in youth and create opportunities for them. We see the emergent countries of Asia and how they harnessed a youthful population to expand their labor force and become more competitive and productive. Africa has that same opportunity. And across the continent, we see young people empowered by information and communications technologies and their own creativity and enterprise, setting up their businesses and connecting to the world.
If young people, on the other hand, are left with too little uh, opportunity to be heard, the demographic dividend spins the other way. And disillusioned youth without access to opportunity uh, can be a problem when they could be the assets. So we greatly urge for investment with competitive and find productivity jobs and other agricultural environments. George is just the match. More decent for number and need to be inclusive and sustainable growth. I would also want to mention the importance of the intent of our ecosystem because there are so many links between environmental sustainability and tackling poverty in all its forms. We look at what is happening to the world's climate, contributing so little and now by what is happening. And it will be uh, vital to be strengthening resilience to what is happening to the world's climate while continuing to campaign and advocate for agreement. Which the issues of internal conflict and instability, where they exist, see the setbacks they cause for development, but they can be addressed including through very concerted efforts to strengthen social co establish the rule of law, the capacity for people to sort out their differences, and by making governance at all levels as responsive and inclusive as possible. We see around the world greater connectivity and through it growing awareness of people's rights and more people to engage politically, in dialogue, in activism. And we think that governments which welcome wider and deeper by their citizens will build greater trust in the political system and its capacity to uh, deliver. Where they are empowered by information and communicates and informed with good data, citizens do monitor development progress in their countries. And our Secretary General of the United Nations has called on all countries to achieve what he calls an accountability revolution to help drive sustainable development. In the common African position on post-2015 development agenda, African leaders committed to take a path of ownership which engages all citizens and enables them to hold key development stakeholders mutually accountable. And at UNDP, we want to work with the nations of the continent to realize that objective, building on the engagement there has been around the whole process of defining the new global development agenda. Let us also recognize the importance of strong partnerships of connecting countries to each other. And the purpose of this conference, to connect uh, emerging countries with those who wish to be countries. Uh, we want to work with African countries to inform decision makers with evidence of what has worked elsewhere so it can be adapted uh, to uh, local circumstances. We want to work closely with the African Union and the other institutions project. And I would also like to acknowledge uh, the importance of UNDP's part Thank you for speeding up progress in the Institute. On the global agendas, Africa's emergence can be accelerated by implementation of the outcomes from this year's series of major UN summits. It started just this last weekend at Sendai, Japan, on disaster risk reduction. In July, the action moves to Addis Ababa with the Financing for Development International Conference. Then to the UN General Assembly in September for the Special Summit on Sustainable Development and launching the new Sustainable Development Goals. Here with the Climate Change Conference of Parties in Paris, where it is hoped a new global treaty which will make a real difference uh, will emerge. This is a year which represents a once-in-a-generation opportunity to set visionary yet practical agendas for global development. We 
which will support the emergence of and every country within. So to conclude, Mr. President, together at this conference about Africa's emergence, we know this continent has the leadership and it has the vision which can produce emergence. We see a number of countries making great progress towards that goal. With a commitment to inclusive and sustainable growth and governance, with a commitment to arrest environmental degradation and build greater resilience to shocks, with a drive for greater equality and harnessing the full potential of women and youth, and indeed of all Africans, emergence will happen and human and sustainable development will be the winner. For me, the goal of emergence is never GDP growth per se. It is the pursuit of greater human health and happiness so that each one of us can fulfill our potential and participate fully in and contribute to our societies. In so doing, we will contribute together to building a more peaceful and prosperous continent and world. I thank you. Thank <laughs> you.